Welcome to Q&A with Prof. A, the Ibato kay Doc Bato educational series. The question thrown to us today is, Prof. A, when do we give intravenous bicarbonate in metabolic acidemia? Common sense will tell us that you replace something that is lost. So in states of metabolic acidosis, bicarbonate therapy is most essential in conditions that has lost bicarbonate. To give it in disease states where there is no loss of bicarbonate remains to be controversial and needs stronger physiologic evidence. How would I know that the body is losing bicarbonate? Of course, we do a very good history. Usually, they have diarrhea or polyuria. Then, after, we request for a blood gas and check for NAGMA or normal and ion gap metabolic acidosis. If you remember, NAGMA means that the acidemia is due either from failure to secrete hydrogen ions or reabsorption of bicarbonate. The acronym HARD UPS, hyperalimentation, acetazolamide use, renal tubular acidosis, diarrhea, ureterosigmoidostomy, pancreatic fistula, or 0.9 normal saline solution overload. These conditions require bicarbonate therapy. We also opt to give bicarbonate if the compensatory mechanisms for acidemia have failed. Remember the three lines of defense against metabolic acidosis? The first is hemoglobin buffer system, which acts immediately. In addition, it is unique because your hemoglobin binds to both hydrogen and carbon dioxide. It is followed by the lungs to blow off the carbon dioxide within 2 to 4 hours. Then only after several days will the kidneys do their job by buffering, either by secreting hydrogen or absorbing bicarbonate. This is the last line of defense. So what does this mean clinically? If there is still persistent acidosis days after the insult, then either the patient has anemia, lung disorder, or kidney impairment. Usually, critically ill patients have all these problems. This is the time that IV bicarbonate may be given. If ever there is a need to give bicarbonate, when can we give it? Do we give it as a full correction or half correction? All the most authorities in acid-based physiology, they will give bicarbonate at an arterial pH of less than 7.1. It is not a hard and fast rule. Remember, extracellular pH is 7.4, while intracellularly, it is 7.1. And we all know that acidemia is protective for the brain, but unfortunately, troublesome for the heart. So for me, pH of 7.0 or less needs correction. Full correction implies achieving the normal pH. Doing the whole nine yards of bicarbonate correction may have its adverse effects. The patient can have hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, respiratory acidosis, hypernatremia, volume overload, and even rebound alkalemia from the conversion of lactate and ketone bodies to bicarbonate once the insult has abated. So we set a target pH of 7.2 for correction. How much bicarbonate? We calculate using the volume of distribution of bicarbonate, which is approximately that of total body water. So if your serum bicarbonate is more than 10, your volume of distribution of bicarbonate is 0.5 times the weight. If it's between 5 to 10, the volume of distribution is 0.75 times the weight. If it's less than 5, it is 1 times the weight. And to correct and compute for the bicarbonate deficit, it is weight times the volume of distribution of bicarbonate times our desired pH or bicarbonate of 15 minus the actual bicarbonate. In patients with risk of overload or are already overloaded, it is given as a continuous drip incorporated in their IVF for 24 hours. Otherwise, we can give it half as a bolus 
and the remainder within 6 to 12 hours as an infusion. Make sure that your serum potassium, calcium, carbon dioxide are within normal levels before giving the IV bicarbonate. After 2 hours, repeat the blood gas and assess the need for other interventions. If the acidemia is intractable, refer to a nephrologist for kidney replacement therapy. In summary, we give IV bicarbonate only if there is, number one, NAGMA, normal and ion gap metabolic acidosis, regardless of how low the pH is. Otherwise, if there is high and ion gap metabolic acidosis or HAGMA, we correct the acidemia with bicarbonate only if the arterial pH is less than 7.0. The hematologic, pulmonary, and kidney systems are down. We only aim for a pH of 7.2 and not the full correction to normal values. If there is no hypokalemia, if there is no hypocalcemia, there is no respiratory acidosis and no volume overload, we can give IV bicarbonate. Not to overemphasize, treat the underlying cause, which in this case, if it is HAGMA, there is an excess of unwanted acids. If all else fails or if the acidosis is intractable, refer immediately to a nephrologist for kidney replacement therapy. For more concepts on kidney diseases, don't forget to click the subscribe button.